Hi everyone, LP here, and uh, today is Monday, um, the 7th of October. I watched, uh, it's so hard to do, please don't swipe away, listen to this. Listen to this, watch what I'm going to show you, and tell me if your government is still actually working for you. Today I watched the uh, the, the White House press briefing. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, just throw a little snippet out there for you, and then you tell me, and then we're going to show you some of what's really happening in Western North Carolina. Yeah, let's do that. Now, moving on to the hurricane, uh, Hurricane Helene, President Biden and Vice President Harris continue to, to use every tool available to help communities devastated by Hurricane Helene. Over the weekend, President Biden ordered another 500 active duty troops to move into Western North Carolina, North Carolina, pardon me. In addition to the 1,000 troops the president previously ordered to deploy to the state. This is on top of the more than 6,100 National Guardsmen and over 7,000 federal personnel, all working together with their state and local counterparts to help people begin their road to rebuilding. Over the last few days, the administration has contracted, contacted nearly 450 state and local officials across the region to offer further support. And to date, the president, the, the, the president, this administration has helped thousands of Helene survivors, uh, Helene survivors just jumpstart their recoveries, providing over $210 million in direct financial assistance with more coming every day. As the president has said, when it comes to this whole of government response, we are sparring no, sparing no, uh, no uh, resource here. Unfortunately, scam artists and bad faith actors and others who are putting politics over people are promoting misinformation about our efforts, including falsehoods about federal assistance. This is wrong, dangerous, and must stop immediately. Elected officials at every level and on both sides of the aisle have also called for an end to these conspiracy theories. False information following a disaster can discourage people from seeking critical assistance when they need it the most. Everyone, especially those in positions of power, must do everything they can to encourage survivors to register for assistance, not discourage them by allowing these falsehoods to fester. Finally, the president was brief yesterday and again today on the potential impacts of Hurricane Milton, which forecasts it to become a Category 5 storm and make landform, landfall Wednesday on the western coast of Florida. As with Helene, FEMA and other federal agencies are actively pre-positioning life-saving resources in advance of the storm, and earlier today the president approved governor of Florida's request for an emergency disaster declaration which unlocks additional federal resources to help the state respond to the storm. To everyone in the path of Milton, the time to prepare is right now. Visit ready.gov or, or go download the FEMA, the FEMA app to make a plan today. The time is right now. Please, please, please listen to local officials. It could save your life. And on this issue of funding, the administration has money to send to Lebanon without Congress coming back. But Congress does have to come back to approve money to send to people in North Carolina. Do I have that right? Here's what I'm going to be very clear about. The president and the vice president has had a, a robust whole of government uh, response to this. Hundreds of millions of dollars. I said it at the top, more than $200 million uh, that we have directly uh, put towards survivors here uh, uh, for the dis for disaster help. And that's because of this president's commitment uh, to make sure that we are there for communities that are impacted. We take this very seriously again. We take this very seriously. And before, before uh, the hurricane hit, we prepositioned more, more than 1,500 uh, federal, uh, federal folks on the ground to help. And so we have made sure that every state has gotten their storm requested uh, emergency declaration. They requested it and we made sure they received it. We've taken this very seriously. More than $200 million that we have provided to the impacted areas. And, but instead, 
people want to do disinformation, misinformation, which is dangerous, which is dangerous. Because then it, what that, when, when folks on the ground hear that, they may not want to ask for the help that they need. That is there for them. That is there for them. That's our focus here. But President Biden is fond of saying, show me your budget and I will tell you what you value. If he's got money for people in Lebanon right now without Congress having to come back, what does it say about his values? There is not enough money right now for his people values, in North Carolina who his, need it. That's not misinformation. Wait, no, that is we, your whole your whole premise of the question is misinformation, sir. And what you don't? Yes, yes, Which it's part? misinformation. Did, is there I money just, to just I just mentioned. Right now? I just mentioned. I just mentioned to you that we provided more than two hundred million dollars to folks who are impacted in the area, and I just shared with you that people are deciding not to. Not, well, people are deciding not to. President not to wait. To Congress that there's not enough money to help people. We're in North talking Carolina about the SBA by, disaster loan. That's yes. money for people in North right. Carolina, and that's important. And people in North Carolina need that. Con so wait, this is nothing new, right Peter. This is nothing new. Congress comes together. They provide money, millions of dollars, for disaster relief. We're asking them to do the job that they have been doing for some and I'm time. From a letter that President Biden been doing sent for to Johnson, some time. Schumer, and Jeffries. The president's letter is not misinformation. Would you agree? No, the way you're asking me the question is misinformation. There is money that we are allocating to the impacted areas, and there's money there to help people who truly need it. There are survivors who need the funding, who need the funding. And it's the there. That you don't like misinformation. I said that I actually said we have the money available to help uh, survivors of Hurricane Helene and also Hurricane Milton. Now, we're now there's going to be a shortfall, right? Because we don't know how bad it's Hurricane Milton is going to be. And so we're going to need additional funding. We're going to need additional funding. That's exactly what I just asked about. And you said it was no. misinformation. Yes. What you're asking me is why Congress needs to come back and do their job. That's what you're asking me. Congress needs to come back and do their job and provide extra assistance, extra funding to disaster relief fund. That's what Congress needs to do, and we're going to continue to urge that. You may not want that, but that's OK. That's what this president wants, and that's what the vice president wants. Thanks, everybody. So right here you're going to see this government helicopter hover above this donation center in North Carolina just far enough to start blowing all their stuff around and ruin a bunch of their tents that they've got set up for the donation center. And then they just dip out. Yeah, that's their version of helping. Where I work, which is called Insight Partners, which is owned by... Well, that's something. Let me go over here and see if I can eat drop. I've never seen that before. They just landed this helicopter right here. What are they doing? Styling? I don't know what they're dropping off. What I heard was power supplies, like oh. batteries oh. that could be recharged and used for lights. Samaritan's purse. Oh, yeah. They've done a tremendous job here. Let's see what they dropped off here. Food, snacks, Paper goods, We've got water. I'm not sure what's in these big sealed packages here. That might be where the batteries are. How y'all doing? That was nuts, but that's, uh, you know. The place is just a disaster. I mean, parts of it are getting power back and stuff, but it's really only the main, the main in town areas that have a little bit of power. The, the river valleys, Wherever the river valley is, um, any of the small little streams, little tributaries, branches that come into the the river are are just wiped off the earth. Um, there was there was a section of the river. We'll maybe put in some footage of the of this, but there was literally literally a twenty foot wall of water that rushed through and just erased people's lives, just homes everything cars I all the water down near the bottom is going to be contaminated with sewage and chemicals and all the nasty stuff that a flood would wash wash into it it's getting clean i mean it's it's going to clean itself eventually i mean this the water well, if you want we can pass it down yeah 
I walk with a man who plans to deliver two five-gallon cans of gasoline and food to a friend whose storm-damaged house is at the bottom of a North Carolina gorge. The only road in and out was largely destroyed in the storm. So now you can only leave via emergency helicopter or by taking a vigorous and muddy three-mile hike out about a thousand feet up. It will undoubtedly be a very long time before our vehicles are safely able to use this road again. Josh, how much farther do you think we have here? The man I'm walking with, Josh Parker, hasn't been able to get in touch with his friend Brian and is worried. We run into other civilians who have been hiking down in order to help survivors who are either stranded or don't want to leave. They got hella chainsaws down there. Yeah. Yeah. As we approach the bottom of the Green River Cove Gorge, we run into Fred Russick. He was among many Gorge residents who rode out the storm. Now, as you can see, your government isn't doing anything for you. They've got 1,500 people in the area. They've got FEMA trucks that are hiding behind trees. They're pretending to do things. Yes, I know the National Guards, the 82nd, the 101st Airborne, all have troops on the ground, and I know that they're doing good things. But for some reason, our government in general, as a whole, the civilian component, has dropped the ball. When someone loses everything, when they can't put food in their mouth, when they can't drink water, they don't care about $750. Yes, thank you, they can afford to live in a hotel for a week now, but they wouldn't even be able to put any food in their bellies. I'm not saying that the system doesn't do good. What I'm saying is, is that the system doesn't do what it needs to do when it needs to do. We have to stop with the bureaucracy, we have to stop with the red tape, we have to stop these civilian workers from hiding from their job. And to the government, Whatever misinformation you think people are putting out, maybe you should come back and watch this video because I don't see a single government worker in any of these videos. If you like what I'm doing, thumbs up at the end of the stream or at the end of the, the video. It helps with the algorithm. If you're watching for the first time, please subscribe. If you uh, want to support the channel, check out a YouTube membership. There's a link in the description. Until the next time, stay safe. Have a great day, and I shall see you when I see you. And oh, by the way, we've got another hurricane coming. It's just so much fun to be a government employee these days.